Good morning. I'm Alan Kay, welcoming Elder here at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple, Ontario. It is a beautiful sunny day, a wonderful spring day here in Maple, and I look forward to you joining with us as we praise God and we praise this Ascension Day. So, and we'll find out more about that as we go through the service. So let me pass it on to Robert Hayashi to lead us in that service. Well, my friends, let us hear the words from Revelation chapter 5, verses 12 to 13. Then every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and under the sea and all that is in them sang, to the one who sits on the throne of the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. It is such a joy to be back with you here at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple, Ontario. It is my privilege to be able to worship with you this day. So, forever, so wherever you are joining us from, thank you for joining in the live stream. And perhaps you're viewing this recording later on. And again, thank you for joining with us in worship to praise our God and to uh, lift our voices up to him through uh, the reading of his word, through song, and through prayer. Our call to worship today is a prayer for God to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us pray together. Dear God, you look favorably upon your people. So today, as we prepare ourselves for worship, we ask that you will stretch our imaginations to sense the majesty and mystery of Jesus' ascension. Help us to understand and perceive how Jesus' presence in heaven can give us confidence in our praying, purpose in our living, and hope for our future. Through Jesus Christ, our ascended Lord, we pray. Amen. And so just as Alan has said, it is a beautiful spring day here in Maple, Ontario. You cannot help to feel hopeful, to feel joyous this day. And so let our souls awaken to the Lamb upon the throne as we hear and sing our opening worship song, Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs> Oh, 
again, a welcome to everyone. For those of you who just joined into the live stream, a special welcome to you. And so it's hard not to feel the majesty of God when you hear that hymn that proclaims the Lamb upon the throne. And so with human hearts sometimes filled with joy and sometimes filled with sorrow and sadness, and with a spirit of humility and a spirit of faith, let us come before God in prayer. And with an honesty about who we are, let us bow down before him and confess our sins. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God in heaven, we celebrate and give thanks for the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ to sit and reign at your right hand. But often the way we live our lives proclaims our lack of faith in his power to deal justly with the world and with us. And so we have come today to make our confession to you. We come, O Lord, on this day of glory to confess our lack of faith and trust. While we sing of your lordship over all creation, we have too often acted as though you are powerless in the face of world events and the pandemic. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to live with faith and confidence in your presence today as we confess to you our private words of confession in this moment of silence. O oh Lord, renew us in your mercy. Renew us by your forgiveness. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, our ascended Lord, grant us your peace. Amen. My sisters and brothers, hear the good news. Just as God's words were fulfilled through Christ's ascension, so too are our sins forgiven through the fulfillment of his promise. Dear friends, by God's grace and through Christ's sacrifice, your sins have been forgiven. And you have been set free to live a new life in the care of our ascended Lord and Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so, my friends, being set free with joy in our hearts, let us pass the peace of Christ to each other by making the sign of peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Well, today in our time with our youth and all those who are young at heart, I'd like to read you a letter to the editor that I found in the Globe and Mail newspaper on April the 28th. Now, the writer was responding to a previous article in the newspaper about Quebec's Bill 21 that bans all religious symbols from publicly funded workplaces and schools. And so the letter to the editor reads as follows. As a non-Christian, I am all for Bill 21. Religious symbols say to me, look, I'm better than you are. Even within families, such symbols can be problematic. A close relative wears a cross on her necklace because she is a church-going Christian. She also knows well that most of the family are non-believers. I think it would be thoughtful of her not to wear her necklace at family gatherings. If our dear father was alive, I think he'd be appalled at her practice, considering it a real put-down for him and us. Let religious folks wear all the symbols they want off the job and at home. So let me ask you, what's your reaction to hearing that letter? Perhaps you're like me at first blush, it makes you a little angry. 
it uh, makes you a little incensed that here again is cancel culture rearing its head. Maybe you think she's being unfair to her relative. Or maybe you think she's right that Christians should only be allowed to wear the cross at home. Or maybe we should hide that cross somewhere within our shirts. But before we get angry and assert our right to wear a symbol of our faith, perhaps we should first think about why this lady feels so strongly. Now, what do you think about her experience with Christians? What do you think her experience has been with the Christian faith, with the message of the gospel? Well, as I thought about it, I don't think it has been a very positive one. You know, whatever her experiences have been, it's made her feel that the purpose behind those religious symbols are to say, look, we Christians are better than you. In her saying those words, I know that she has gotten the message all wrong or that the Christians in her life have presented the gospel to her incorrectly. If she had come to understand the message of the gospel as God intended it to be understood, she would have understood that the cross is a symbol of love, a symbol of grace, a symbol of forgiveness, and not a symbol of a put down. The cross is an open invitation to be with God, to be welcomed by God into his family. It's not a symbol of exclusion to make others feel bad about themselves. It is a symbol that should remind everyone that God loves them. So her letter is a good reminder for us as we go about our daily lives, spreading the gospel through word and through our actions, to do so in humility, as Jesus did, and make sure we never come across as thinking we are better than another. But that's not the message of the gospel. Let's pray together. Living and ever-present God, thank you for the reminder today to walk in humility with you and with Jesus. Help us to do so and spread your message of grace and love in the world. We pray for the writer of the letter that she too will one day come to know your love and saving grace, as well as the members of her family. We ask your blessing for all those in need and us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so now let us hear God's holy word. Let us pray. Loving God, attend to us as we open your word. May our hearts and spirits listen for your will for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The first part of our Bible reading this morning is from Psalm 24. That's from the New International Version. And it's of David, a psalm. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. Such is the generation who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your gates, lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory 
may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. The second part of the Bible reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 to 53, and this is again from the New International Version. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The Ascension of Jesus. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple Praising God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our hymn, Christ is the King, is the next upcoming hymn. Amen. Eternal God, in the proclaiming of your word. Your if message. you want to know why you're so tired. Well, we probably didn't want to know that, but that's okay. Eternal God, in the proclaiming of your word, may your message be heard. In the meditations of all of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Today's message is entitled, Be Lifted Up. Now, traditionally, we understand Christ's ascension to heaven as the culmination of God's divine plan for Jesus. With his earthly mission complete, Jesus returns to his father and to his father's house. Ascension is the grand finale of all of Jesus's earthly words and works done for our salvation. It is the culmination of his earthly works, but not the conclusion of them. Thus, Ascension Sunday celebrates Jesus's exaltation and his heavenly reign seated at the right hand of the Father. He is now in control of God's continuing plan of salvation through the Holy Spirit unrestricted by time or space or culture. Being seated at the right hand of the Father is the fulfillment of the prophet Daniel's vision concerning the Son of Man. To him was given dominion and glory and kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages 
should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. It is his exaltation, his everlasting dominion, and his kingdom that are often preached about on Ascension Day. But in reading the passage, I wondered if there might be another message for us. If we examine the passage more closely, we come to notice that of the 177 words in the passage, only 10, only 10 of them actually describe the ascension of Jesus. The focus of the passage is on Jesus's role as the fulfillment of the law, the fulfillment of the words of the prophets and the fulfillment of the words of the psalmists. Jesus's own words in the passage proclaim this fulfillment. And yes, it's true that he departs from his disciples, but this occurs almost as a footnote without breaking the flow of the fulfillment story. A reader who is caught up in the commissioning message of Jesus's words could easily miss the phrase was carried up into heaven. In fact, surprisingly, the disciples seem utterly unfazed by Jesus being lifted up into heaven. They simply go on to worship, rejoice, and begin their new mission. Well, therefore, from our closer examination of the passage, allow me to suggest to you that the message of Ascension Day is not only about the physical act of ascension and reuniting of the incarnate word with the unbegotten source, but it is also about the divine act of making space. Making space so that the mission of the church could begin. So long as God was in the world in human form, all eyes and all hearts were fixed there. Jesus' ascension makes space for the disciples to turn their gaze upon the world, where repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the Messiah's name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Now Pentecost, the birthday of the church, is still 10 days in the future. Nevertheless, in order for there to be space for the Holy Spirit to inspire and enliven the apostles' witness, the word, God in human form, must leave the stage. Such an act of giving space is also an act of giving place. Giving a place where our individualness is recognized and appreciated. This giving place is characteristic of the triune God. As the Reverend Dr. Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury in the Church of England suggests, each of the three divine persons seeks not to gain pride of place or to assert hierarchical dominion over the others, but to give place to the others so that they too can most fully be what they are. As such, the divine trinity models for us the true nature of community in which self-assertion and hegemony give way to a polyphonic chorus of mutual participation and difference. And so my friends, how can we understand this space-making and place-giving in our context today? Well, perhaps more than any other time in history, we live in a culture that glorifies the individual. This culture has only reinforced our ego's desire to be praised and acknowledged. 
We want people to admire our lives, to like us on social media, to praise us for whatever we do, big or small. And when we face rejection or criticism of any kind, we are hurt by it. We become jealous and petty when others seem to be doing better than ours. When others get the praise we think we deserve, when others are liked or acknowledged more than us. Sadly, that is the model of the first world society we live in. But our passage today reminds us that there is another model. Another model that gives us a place where our individual talents, gifts, and spirit is not only acknowledged, but welcomed into a community where each is seen, where each is understood to have an equally important role, and where each is loved and appreciated. It is that model. It is that model that Jesus ascended into. And it is that model that he gives back to us. He gives us a place where we can be whom we are meant to be, where we can live freely and authentically, and where our uniqueness is welcome and put to use in God's ever-expanding kingdom. For in his ascension, Jesus not only gives place to us, he makes space for us. He makes space for us to continue his mission. He makes space for us to focus our attention on something else besides ourselves. And he makes space for us to step bravely into the world, knowing that we have a particular place in it, the place that he has given us. And so my friends, on this Ascension Day, be lifted up. Be lifted up as Jesus was lifted up. Into that space. Into that place where you were always meant to be. Be lifted up out of the depths of your sorrow. Be lifted up out of your uncertainty. And be lifted up out of whatever has been holding you back. Be lifted up and ascend as Jesus did to a place where God is calling you to be. Be brave. Be brave and let go of the past and be lifted up into your future and let your heart ascend to the heavens as you do the work of the kingdom and spread the gospel message of grace and love. And may we together as a community of faith be lifted up from our worries over finances and attendance and ascend to the place where God is calling us to be, where he has already made a space for his ministry and mission to be carried on right here in Maple. And so, my dear friends, my sisters and brothers in Christ, on this Ascension Day, like Jesus, like Jesus, allow yourself to be lifted up. Be lifted up to live that full and abundant life that fulfills what God has already written about you. And may you too, when your earthly mission is complete, ascend to the place where you forever, forever belong. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, may it be so. Amen. And so, my friends, be lifted up today. Know that God has already written about you, that he has made a place for you in this world where your uniqueness where your gifts and talents and spirit will be used to extend his kingdom, to show his love and grace in the world. And know that Jesus, through his ascension, has 
made a space for us to journey together in the mission of the church. And so today we have been reminded that Jesus is asking us to be lifted up with him and that he will take us higher and higher if we let him. And that Jesus promises us that we will go with him from glory to glory. And we will be forever changed and will never be the same. Let us be assured of this with our responsive worship song, Glory to Glory, performed by the Tyndale Singers. Glory to glory, 
circumstances to go from glory to glory and we're assured of that because Jesus promises that that's where he will take us to well today in our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession we have a lot to celebrate first we celebrate the ascension of our Lord but also today uh, the Lobo family wants to have us join in celebrating Chris's birthday. So happy birthday to you, Chris, from your family here at St. Andrews. As well, the Lobo family would also uh, ask our prayers uh, for Blossom. Uh, she's gonna have back surgery uh, on May the 27th. So first we uh, lift her up and pray that her back surgery goes well. Um, also, we pray that her back surgery actually goes as planned on that particular day, May 27th. We know that many uh, surgeries have been canceled uh, due to the uh, pandemic here in Ontario. As well on this day, we look out into the world and uh, we lift up uh, the people in the Middle East. We pray for peace in the conflict there between Palestine and uh, Jerusalem. I know that there are age old hurts and conflicts there, but the devastation that we see on the news is just so heartbreaking. And so we, we pray for peace and we pray for those who are suffering uh, there. We also pray for um, our sisters and brothers in India uh, as that country continues to see close to 350,000 daily cases of COVID and the stress that it puts on um, the healthcare system and the society at large. And we pray for each individual family that has to deal with a loved one who is sick and who may not be in hospital and who needs care. We also pray for those areas within our own country here in Canada that are experiencing ever increasing COVID um, rates. And we pray for our healthcare professionals who continue to be overworked, who go out each day and work tirelessly uh, for the benefit of others. And so we pray for them. We also pray for those essential workers who do the same, who go out into the world, um, sometimes fearful, sometimes worried about what they might bring home to their families. We pray for them and we ask that God would protect them as they go about their work. Sometimes, Lord, that uh, there's just so much to pray for, so many things as we look out into the world that we need to pray for, to lift up to you. We can't name them all now, but you know them all and we're assured of that. And so we just lift all the needs of the people around the world up to you. We also lift up the needs of your faithful here at St. Andrews, voiced or perhaps not voiced at this moment. We ask that you would help us continue to discern what ministry and mission means for us here at St. Andrews. And so now, dear friends, let us now offer our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession through Christ who perfects our prayers. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Ascended Lord Jesus, our mediator and brother, we thank you for becoming human and experiencing the joys and sorrows of this life, which assures us that in our weakness, you understand and empathize with us. 
We think of your heavenly reign as regal, powerful, and perhaps a bit distant. We think of your sovereign rule as mostly quashing evil, pursuing justice, and defeating sin. Remind us this day that your lordship is also about being close to people, people in need, who need to be lifted up. Help us to remember that you not only see evil that needs defeating, but also see human suffering that needs ministry. For you, O oh Lord, see the tears of the grieving, the aching sobs of the heartbroken and the downtrodden that overtake them when the rest of us are not looking. For you, O oh Lord, feel the abandonment, fear, and despair that so many people live in every day, born through war, poverty, abuse, illness, or uncertainty, some brought on by the pandemic. Yet you are our broken world's every hope. You are tender enough to weep with those who weep, and yet strong enough to lift, lift up those who are weary. You are our rescuer when our lives run off the path of righteousness. And you are forever gracious enough to forgive our foolishness and guide us again on the path that leads to your kingdom. We lift up to you those we have named, and in this moment of silence, we bring our private prayers to you. Prayer is buried so deep within our hearts that only you have the key to unlock them. Holy Christ of God, we are the people of your ascension and your reign. And in whatever we do, help us never to forget who we are, whose we are, and the space and place you have left open for us to bravely live in. Messiah of our hearts, grant that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. And so now encourage us onward to do the work of your Father's kingdom as we say together the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Hello, everyone, again. Offerings and donations can be paid online through our partnership with CanadaHelps.org. Go to www.canadahelps.org slash en slash dn slash 56495. Or donations can be mailed or delivered to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, 9860 Keel Street, Vaughan, Ontario, L6A 3Y4. Thank you to all those who have given and continue us with allowing us to carry on this ministry, which leads us to our mission moment for today, Transform Online Course. Last fall, ministry leaders from across Canada came together for the Presbyterian Church in Canada's Transform Online Course. Over four weeks, Rick, Rick Morse, a co-creator of the New Beginnings Church Renewal Program and author of Making a Congregational Plan That Makes Sense, challenge leaders to imagine what it means to faithfully respond to God's mission and engage others to be missional. The course, which was made possible through gifts to Presbyterian sharing, equipped leaders with the transformative tools, principles, and insights necessary to discern God's call for their ministries, future, and create plans for moving forward. I got to say, here we are, right? Isn't that really what has been happening? It, it's a transformation of our church. 
uh, here we are, we're speaking online, or you may be listening to this live, you may be listening to this on a video replay. Clearly in the nearly 200 years of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church here in Maple, this is the first time that has ever happened. And so out of adversity comes opportunities and allows for change. So you can assess things like Presbyterian sharing with your donations, again, through those online choices or by filling in those other boxes on your envelope when you make donations to the church. I do really appreciate those. And along with appreciating got ja Dr. Jackie Gar Period Gupta here beside me working on the soundboard. We have uh, Valerie Ramwa. She didn't read today, but she also does come every Sunday to help set everything up and prepare and often does do the readings as well. And I do really appreciate uh, the involvement that have. And of course, your involvement by sitting in to listen to our service on the live stream or to watch it afterwards uh, through the video replay. But here's some other options available to us. I'm just going to share my screen. We have an upcoming Zoom Bible study uh, brought to you by Fabrizio Piazza. And so Fab, uh, thanks a lot for putting this together. He's done a lot of work. I know he's done a lot of planning and uh, research, et cetera, himself. And with the assistance, assistance of our interim moderator, uh, Reverend Dr. Heather Weiss. And so that's coming up on Thursdays at 7.30, starting this Thursday, May the 20th. Um, I'm not sure how many weeks it'll run for, um, but uh, uh, we'll send the Zoom details are in the handout, the order of service that I sent to you for today's service. So you can get it there. And otherwise, you're always welcome to email me and, uh, and I will uh, send it out to you if you, uh, and I'll probably send an email out reminder to everybody as well. So I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are, oh, Fabrizio just sent me a comment, six weeks. So there we go. We, got, we know he's listening. So that's wonderful. So everybody, one thing about Bible study, this is the best thing because you don't have to prepare. Fab did all the prep. You don't have to know the Bible. You don't have to know this thing off by heart. They'll go through passages. Um, and it's really just a great opportunity to come together to go a little bit deeper. Uh, it's a little more interactive. I know some of you might be shy, so you don't have to speak. Um, but it just is a great way to uh, get a little bit deeper into the Bible and to learn something. So again, you know, that's one of the other options of benefits of Zoom, of using the electronics is that we're able to bring that to you without having to come together. And you can do it from the convenience of your own home or office, et cetera, depending on when you're working. So do thank you all for that. And do thank uh, Fabrizio for bringing that uh, up, preparing this for us. And I'll look forward to that coming this Thursday. And now I will send it back to Robert. So let me reiterate Alan's point. Um, and we give our offerings uh, each week. Um, and we often think of them as in monetary terms. But God also wants us to offer ourselves out into the world and um, offer our time to him. And Bible study is a great way to do that. Whether it's reading the Bible on your own in your particular uh, spot at home or being part of a Bible study. It's one way that we can offer ourselves back to God. And I will tell you, by doing so, whether you read the Bible on your own or you join in the Bible study, you will get a hundredfold back uh, for your time invested. Uh, certainly in Bible study as well, don't, uh, like Alan said, don't feel intimidated. Come and you don't have to say anything. You can just listen and let the Holy Spirit, the word of God sink into you. Or you can participate. Everybody's voice has worth. It's that uniqueness again that place that God has given us. Um, so I encourage you to join in the Bible study and uh, be encouraged by uh, the, the path that Fabrizio will lead us down. And so my friends, thank you for your continued support of God's ministry and mission here at St. Andrew's Maple. Let us now dedicate our offering through prayer. Let us pray.
Holy God, you bid us to change and transform our lives so we can share the gift of your love and grace with others. Receive now our gifts as we are able, joyfully given as your flock, in gratitude for all you have done for us. May they be multiplied to accomplish more than we can ask or even imagine, all for your glory. Bless us too, so that our lives will speak of our choice to follow you and lift others up. And may our ministries and mission offer others the healing and hope you have offered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so today, having been lifted up, let us commit to being forever lifted up in the days to come. For it is in and through Christ alone that we will reach those heavenly heights. Let us commit ourselves to do so, confidently singing our faith with our closing worship song, a Celtic version of In Christ Alone.
Well, my dear sisters and brothers, go now from this time of worship, having been reminded that Jesus has created a space for you to carry on his ministry and given you a place in his mission where you can be yourself for the glory of the kingdom and be forever lifted up. And until we see each other again, may God's grace, peace, and love be yours in abundance firm in the knowledge that God will lift you up. Amen. And so now let us sing a blessing unto each other with Go Now in Peace, performed by our sisters and brothers from St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Owen Sound, Ontario. before Robert gives us our last uh, few words for today's service. I do want to thank, uh, uh, and the images that you see, a lot of those were provided by my mom, particularly the outdoor uh, landscape photos. Some of those were Scotland, so I thought that went well with that last one. Uh, the flowers are generally mine, and I've taken from uh, my wife's garden or my neighbor's garden or just walking around the block in our neighborhood. So it is a wonderful spring and it is wonderful to see all those flowers, etc. So I just wanted to give people credit. The thistle at the end though, that was downloaded from the internet because I don't have a nice thistle uh, in my yard. So now I'll turn it back. And so if you would like to have some images put up that you have taken some wonderful photographs of landscapes or whatever, you're welcome to send those to me. And I'd love to be able to include those in uh, the materials that we show. So thank you very much. And now back to Robert. Yeah, absolutely. I'd encourage all of you who to send some images. I know there are some people who love photography out there and uh, we would love to see your images, whether they're from you know, locally here in Ontario, Scotland, uh, Florida, or the west coast of Canada. Please send those images in and uh, they'll be part of the service. And so my friends, this ends our worship service today. It has been such a joy and a privilege to be with you. Thank you for joining with us here at St. Andrews to worship our Lord. Um, I would invite you to stay online uh, for some time of uh, fellowship afterwards. It's only about five or, or 10 minutes or so of fellowship time. 
So until next time, from the worship team here in the sanctuary, from Jackie, Valerie, Alan, and myself, and from all the elders at St. Andrews, from all of us to all of you, may God continue to bless you and keep you safe and care for all those whom you love and care for. Until next time, amen.